It's 2025 and the RTX 4060 has quietly become the most popular GPU on Steam, outpacing even the previous king, the RTX 3060. But does it really deserve this popularity given its modest generational improvements, limited 8GB of VRAM and also unexpectedly high price? Well it quickly becomes clear why there's room for skepticism. Competing GPUs like Intel's B580 and B570, despite facing poor availability at launch, still managed to undercut the RTX 4060, while offering more VRAM and as we'll soon see, even better performance in some scenarios. AMD's RX 7600 also comes in cheaper by around $60 and spending $70 more than the 4060 nests you the RX 7600 XT which has double the VRAM. Older GPUs, especially a used RTX 3060 Ti, can offer better value, though surprisingly, the 3060 12GB still costs more despite weaker performance. So what exactly makes the RTX 4060 so appealing? Of course, DLSS remains a key reason why people gravitate towards Nvidia GPUs, but for this video, I primarily want to focus on raw raster and ray tracing performance. With the arrival of DLSS 4, multi-frame generation and AMD's FSR 4, directly comparing upscaling and frame generation across different GPU generations has become so complicated, especially since FSR 4 isn't supported on older hardware as of yet. We'll start with COD Black Ops 6 in traditional rendering, and the 4016 matches performance with the previous gen GPUs and comfortably beats the 3060 12GB, but it trails the RX 7600 significantly at 1080p. But looking closely, it appears that AMD seems to have an advantage overall. Intel's B580 and B570 fell significantly behind in averages, but they weren't far apart when it comes to wampus and lows compared to the 4060. Jumping to 1440p, the RX 7600 maintains its lead, with the 4060 now falling behind the 3060 Ti, showing us the true story as we become more GPU bound. The B580 edges past in wampus and lows, with the B570 not far behind in averages either. In a less intensive, still competitive time, Title like CS2 at 1080p, the 4060 is a good showing for the most part, outperforming its predecessor and neck and neck with the RX 7600 and 7600 XT. However, it noticeably trails Intel's B580 in frame time consistency, which I honestly didn't expect especially coming from an ARC card. At 1440p, it gets even worse for the 4060, losing to the B580 now in averages, with the 3060 Ti ahead in overall experience. The uplift compared to last gen is a little more reserved, but it does manage to pull ahead over the RX 7600 instead of just being neck and neck. Cyberpunk first without ray tracing at 1080p still shows some of the less expensive cards like the 7600 and B570 not that far behind, especially in lows, and older mid-range GPUs as well as the B580 still comfortably outperform the 4060. At 1440p, the 4060 disappointingly sits neck and neck with Intel's last generation A750, a GPU by the way that costs $150 less, with the B580 providing far superior performance. Flipping on ray tracing first at 1080p at the medium RT preset, Intel's B580 remains the leader with older Nvidia and also Intel cards outperforming the 4060. It's almost like it's improvements made the ray tracing with the third generation RT cores, but at the same time, limited VRAM becomes sort of a delicate balancing act. Almost like that was Nvidia's intention, you know, to bring down costs, thus increasing profits while providing overall similar performance. At 1440p, the same is true, but it's even worse as now the B570 is ahead thanks to its additional VRAM and the same for the B580. Ouch. And there's still only marginal gains versus its predecessor, with Intel's A750 in the rearview mirror, which of course goes without saying. It's pretty disappointing. F124, first at 1080p without ray tracing, gives slightly more glee to the 4060 with substantial gains over its predecessor while slightly outperforming the RX 7600 and ARC B580. However, the RTX 4060 still struggles to keep up with some of the last generation GPUs that remain stronger performers overall. But at 1440p, the opposite is true as now the 4060 outperforms in lows over the 3060 Ti but is neck and neck with the B580. It's a much better showing generationally as 30 series had trouble with lows, even the 3060 with its 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So 40 series has improved, but for cheaper you can still get a B580. Flipping on ray tracing at 1080, the B580 is still a fierce contender with a matching averages against the 4060. 
and outperforming it in lows. And at the same time, the B570 is not far behind. The 4060 shows this advantage over some of the AMD cards, but some of the last gen cards still outperformed in averages. At 1440, the 3060 Ti is neck and neck in terms of lows, but retains its edge in terms of averages, and that B580 is still well ahead in terms of consistency, in part thanks to that additional VRAM. Far Cry 6 first without ray tracing at 1080p is sort of a middle ground. On the one hand, the 4060 thoroughly beats the Intel cards in terms of overall consistency, but that's mostly due to optimization issues on Arc. Without these issues, Arc would be doing pretty well. And on the other hand, it closely matches the previous gen Nvidia cards and current AMD mid-range cards, so make of that what you will. At 1440p, ignoring Intel's optimization struggles, the 4060 still falls behind the Arc B580 in averages, which really highlights a struggle to find a clear competitive edge. With ray tracing at 1080p, our 8GB really start to fall behind. The 4060 and 3060 Ti end up neck and neck, with the 3060 12GB well ahead of either. Despite the issues earlier though, the B580 holds the top spot even eclipsing the 7600 XT's averages, but matches the 3060's lows. At 1440p ray tracing, it's a mixed bag across the board, with the 4060 at the bottom, slightly behind the less expensive B570, but losing to the RX 6600, A750, and 3060 Ti. The Radeon cards were the most consistent, but additional VRAM on the older 3060 is breeding new life into it, where even at the highest settings of 1440p, with ray tracing, it's still a great choice with impressive performance, far better than the 4060. Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p holds up that middle ground quite nicely, almost matching the 3060 Ti while being slightly ahead of the B580, 7600, and also ahead of the B570. That said, the experience is close enough on most of these cards that it would be quite hard to notice a difference. At 1440p though, the B580 eclipses the 4060 by a hair's length, but narrowly outperforms the B570 and RX 7600. But the 3060 Ti though, continues to maintain its lead over the 4060, and overall is holding up quite well. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, first without ray tracing at 1080p, the 4060 narrowly leads in frame consistency, holding its ground among rivals from Intel and AMD, but without a decisive victory. At 1440p, it still holds that middle ground, though it's now outpaced by the B580, but is a strong showing against the B570, RX 7600, but the 3060 Ti continues to hold up. Enabling ray tracing, first at 1080p, last gen cards like the 3060 and 3060 Ti again showed this trend of decreased lows, which really gave the 4060 the upper hand, while being neck and neck with the B580 and narrowly outperforming the B570 and 7600. At 1440p, the tables turn as now the 3060 Ti is regaining its edge in lows and also averages, as the B580 tops the chart this time with a more consistent experience overall. So like in other games, the higher resolution you go, the better it gets for Intel, as now the B570 isn't far behind. Looking at averages in all of our 7 games at 1080p, the 4060 narrowly outperforms the B580 by 3%, the B570 by 14%, but trails slightly behind the 3060 Ti by about 7%. At 1440p though, the 4060 trails the B580 only by around 5% and loses to the last gen 3060 Ti by around 11%. While not terrible, this isn't the kind of performance you would expect from the most popular GPU on Steam. And looking at 1080p averages while ray tracing, the B580 clearly chips away at one of the reasons why people go for Nvidia, and that's because because of its ray tracing performance, outperforming the 4060 by 10%, with the last gen 3060 Ti still holding up outpacing it also by 6%. Lastly, for 1440p ray tracing averages, the B580 shows even more of a lead by upwards of 25%, leaving the 4060 pretty much in the dust, with the last gen 3060 Ti still ahead by 8%. When we look at raw rasterization performance per dollar, the 4060 sits disappointingly close to the bottom, barely surpassing even entry-level GPUs like the RTX 3050 6 gig. Both AMD and Intel consistently offer stronger alternatives and certain used cards deliver better value like the 3060 Ti. And with ray tracing, it gets a bit more serious. 
with a wider gap between the 4060 and B580 in the B580's favor. Again, the 3060 Ti is a chart topper when it comes to used value, so it's not a good showing for the 4060 in terms of value, but that's to be expected. For productivity tasks, the 4060 is about as average as it gets. In Blender, architectural improvements boost its performance significantly, leveraging CUDA and optics to significantly outperform non-NVIDIA cards, and also has a decent improvement over last-gen cards. However, its reduced VRAM and limited memory bus severely impact Premiere Pro performance, falling behind even Intel GPUs and older NVIDIA models. Results in professional workloads like SpecViewPerf will vary by application. May have favors the 4060, while SolarWorks and 3ds Max see it lagging behind competitors and even previous Gen cards in certain scenarios. So, what exactly makes the 4060 the most popular GPU of 2025, despite its clear shortcomings? While its raw rasterization and ray tracing performance is decent at 1080p, it consistently struggles against competitors like Intel's Arc B580 and especially Nvidia's own large gen RTX 3060 Ti, particularly when gaming on 1440p. The limited 8GB of VRAM and narrow memory bus bottleneck the 4060, leaving it stuck awkwardly between generations. Nvidia clearly made cost-cutting decisions that compromise the overall performance and value, aiming for profit rather than longevity. Of course, if you're gaming purely at 1080p and prioritize Nvidia's ecosystem like DLSS, frame generation, and CUDA, the 4060 is serviceable. However, considering the prices, competing GPUs like the 7600 and Intel's B580 offer far better overall value. In my opinion, the 4060 is popular because of Nvidia's market dominance and strong brand loyalty, not because it's subjectively the best GPU available. For many, alternatives might be far more appealing, but ultimately, Ultimately, the choice is yours. Anyways, guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Also, make sure to click this video up on the screen right now.